were a teacher during the time of the boycott? Some of the, some of the time I was doing youth and community development work in St Paul's. You know, that meant teaching, running youth clubs and doing various things with, with the community. They were, mainly the Jamaican community would just come, were arriving with their families to stay and to live and to prosper, hopefully prosper in England. And they were going through hell. I mean, they weren't getting jobs. They weren't, they weren't getting, getting dead end jobs. They were getting abuse. They, were getting, they couldn't find places to sleep, to uh, rent, to buy. They couldn't go into necessary. Could go into public houses and have a social intercourse with people because the bar staff, the public necessarily, you know, blacks can't don't sell blacks. I was arrested while in the pub because I refused to leave. Put in jail. Had a whole week in court. Won the case, and there we are, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. The sixes were black people. And they all rallied around you? Was it? Well, many of them thought that. I, some were, yes, I, I got a lot of sympathy, not always transcending support, because I just remember they'd just come over and they, they weren't aware, they didn't know the racism, they hadn't experienced it in the sense that they were, they were surprised to find white people uh, cleaning up the streets and doing dirty jobs, they weren't used to it. So they came from a colonialised country. Of course, the British education system had existed up to the late 1940s, so that England was a world of... Yeah, mother country. Yeah, mother country. Yeah, the mother country, and that's how they saw. Yeah. So, so there, were, there were those who felt, well, I'm not stirring it up, and it makes it more difficult for us. Yeah. And there were those who said, it needs stirring up, because our children, we don't want our children to go through what we're going through.